Do you feel a touch of anxiety today? Great. It's just that you're alive and not a psychopath. Both are not very desirable. Do you want to feel anxious today? Perhaps you're thinking, "Well, that's such a stupid question." It's me who's asking, so allow me to share my own journey with anxiety. I'm not entirely sure when it began, but anxiety is kind of like a background music for me that's always on in my mind. Could it have started back in high school? I can still recall the anxiety preceding each exam, followed by the fear of disappointing my parents if I mess it up. Or perhaps it was during my final year at university. The master's degree application season was fraught with anxiety. The prospect of rejection threatening to render my efforts meaningless. I was so afraid that the past four years. We're just gonna be a joke. Could it have surfaced when I first started working? When I first started my, you know, first job, I feel anxious almost every day, particularly on Sunday nights, as I grappled with my imposter syndrome. Here I was,、uh, a non-tech person working in tech, constantly fearing I'd never measure up. Ironically, even as I was writing this script. Anxiety lurked.、Uh, I was in a cafe when I wrote it, and I couldn't help but wanted to change seats to the one near the window, which has the excellent tunnel view and bask in today's beautiful sunshine, which is not very common in the UK. But all the seats were just occupied. I found myself glancing up every few seconds, ready to bounce on a vacant spot ASAP. So anxiety, from the book *Cognitive Awakening*, it comes in five main flavors. First, completion anxiety. The hustle culture we're in today makes us feel like we have to always do something, achieve something. We set one after another deadlines. We write extensive to-do lists, and resent ourselves at the end of the day if we don't cross off. All the items we crowd our Google calendars with all sorts of activities, from attending weekly meetings to scheduling bathroom breaks. Yes, I've done that. Second, positioning anxiety. Thanks to social media, we are led to believe that everyone else is having a blast, exotic vacations, the hottest girl slash boyfriend, and fortunes made while still in their teens. We compare our twenty-something lives to those in their thirties, gaze at the others' finish lines from our starting points, and begin to question, "What the hell am I doing?" The third type is decision anxiety. An abundance of options are paralyzing. As a famous ice cream or jar or jam jar experiment, I don't remember the original experiment illustrates. Human prefer certainty and simple solutions. People in their twenties often feel more anxious because they are confronted with so many opportunities, leading to overthinking rather than taking action. The fourth one: environmental anxiety. There are certain constraints in our family, job, or physical environment that we can't change despite our best efforts. Perhaps you are a caregiver. So you are unable to travel abroad as much as you can. Perhaps you're working in a nine nine six job and have no time to create the side hustle that you've always wanted to do. Perhaps you are just trying to focus on your finals while someone is having a loud phone conversation in the library. The last type is difficulty anxiety. Some skills are tough to acquire. Some books are challenging to read, and some tasks are just hard to complete. However, overcoming difficulties often creates real competitive advantages. If something is so easy and everyone in this world can do it, then why does the world need you to do that? You might ask, 
Okay, I got it. This is anxiety. Will there come a day when I'm entirely free of anxiety? Regretfully, the answer is nope. Anxiety is largely driven by adrenaline, a chemical in our body. For those who have heard of it before, you know what it does. For those who heard it for the first time, let's picture this scenario. Okay, you're in a forest now, and and you just see a lion nearby. Immediately, scenes from the movie where someone gets eaten by a monster flood your mind. You visualize the agony of being devoured. Your heart raises. Your your feet are primed to sprint. That surge you feel, that's adrenaline. Thanks to it, you feel anxious. You bow and you evade becoming the lion's lunch, or dinner, breakfast. <clears throat> so yes, anxiety in its essence is a good thing. It keeps us alive. We need anxiety just as we need laughter and tears, friends and family. But where does it go wrong? First, it diverts us from the present moment. Even in tense situations, have you noticed how we rely on memory and imagination? We humans have a tendency to drift away from the present because of adrenaline. Anxiety will likely accompany us for a long, long time. When it escalates to anxiety disorder, we should seek professional help. But for the most part, the day-to-day anxiety we feel is a natural part of our human experience. As said in the book, "Making Friends with Anxiety," anxiety involves our unique ability to travel through time mentally using memory and imagination, something other animals can do. Animals don't worry about work on Monday or last week's argument with other furry friends. By following their example and focusing on the present moment instead of ruminating on the past or worrying about the future. Anxiety lessens. When anxiety begins to rise, remind yourself gently that it's just adrenaline in action. There is no lion preparing to bounce, and perhaps the lion is full. Moreover, anxiety cannot influence outcomes, particularly those beyond your control. Being anxious post interview won't secure you the job offer. Being anxious after an exam won't guarantee a distinction, and being anxious after a day won't win you a partner. Whether you fret about it or not, the rain will still come, and even when it does, you can choose to complain about the rain or dance in it. Back to the scene. When I'm not looking too far ahead to see if there's any empty seats available, I notice the small pleasures around me. A family sharing a meal and conversation, a couple displaying their affection and hug each other maybe too much. It's a joy to observe life unfolding around me. The second pitfall is falling into biased mental patterns. All right, I confess, I still glance around occasionally, and finally, an empty seat. I transition from my table to the window seat, like a winged. And guess what? That seat was not as great as I had imagined. The sunshine is a bit too harsh, and I hadn't put on any sunscreen today. Like I hardly ever do, which explains my less than perfect skin. But let's be clear: it's not all good seats or bad seats. Just as life isn't all black or white, people prone to anxiety often fall into the trap of black and white thinking. Instead of waking up and declaring, "Today I'm gonna feel anxious and lousy," consider thinking, "Today might be just fine after all." When dealing with criticism or trying to overcome perfectionism, remind yourself that things are really all good or all bad. Some common patterns include: a. catastrophizing, the tendency to imagine the worst case scenario; b. mind reading, assuming we know others' thoughts, intentions, and motives; c. setting ourselves impossible goals.
like deciding to wake up at four a.m. every day next month when you've been waking up at ten a.m. for the past twenty years. Remember, everyone stumbles occasionally. Even the best coworkers make mistakes. Even ChatGPT make errors due to its nature.、Um, why should you be perfect all the time? Try viewing anxiety as a companion, as a friend. Ignoring or battling it will only foster resentment, anger, and insecurity. That's not a healthy relationship with a friend. By respecting and accepting it, you're more likely to establish a healthier relationship and get a good friend. The third pitfall here is allowing our imagination to govern us. As I continued writing the script, the sun dipped behind a building, and the seat I initially found disappointing turned out to be a pleasant spot. Irrespective of how anxious you feel about something, regardless of the outcome, things tend to work out fine in the end. Worrying doesn't relieve tomorrow of its sorrow; it empties today of its strength. The problem is not our imagination, but how we use it. Anxious people often imagine a grim future, not a bright one. Questions that you can ask yourselves are: Is this worry helpful? Is this worry true? What's the worst possible outcome if it is true? Prioritizing your mental health and physical well-being is never something to feel guilty about. Ensuring your wellness is a part of being a responsible, self-sufficient adult. So, how can you do this? Through physical activities, creative pursuits, and socializing. Remember, nothing ventured, nothing gained. By changing how you approach your fears, you can manage your anxiety instead of letting it managing, instead of letting it manage you. Just start, and you can always improve as you go along. Lastly, we often forget that the world is bigger than our worries. When I was so anxious about my master's application, doing volunteer work greatly helped me. When I accompanied homeless people, when I attended meetings to raise funds for these homeless families, and distributed clothes on the street of Melbourne, I realized I'm part of something big, something beyond me, something meaningful. Remember that you're only a tiny part of this vast universe, and your worries are only a small part of you. Let's go back to the seed bottle the last time. As I prepared to leave the cafe, I realized that today still has plenty of hours left. Where I sat today is a minor part of my day, and also an even smaller, trivial part of my life. Get out in the world, do something for others. If you look at the Earth from space, you realize just how small you are and how small we are, and consequently how insignificant your anxieties are. Your life is far bigger, richer, and more beautiful than that. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I'm Kitty S and Hello Kitty, and this is Questions in Twenties, where we. Help each other go through the quarter life crisis. If you like this type of content, please,、um, I don't know, follow this podcast, and I'll see you in the next episode.